we wouldn't be where we are today with Oppo Coaches, but at the same time, it reached the point that some of us felt like a new library was needed. So far, the, the, the reception has been great. The number of people using it grows every day. Space Monkeys blasting off with Josep. He's the chief poppy of poppy, successor to Polkadot.js. I think we're going to figure out exactly what's going on here. Josep, welcome to the show. Thank you so much just for having me. I've been hearing a lot about poppy and like I, I just said, specifically in this context of uh, replacing Polkadot.js or being the successor of it. But I'm not exactly sure what I mean when I say Polkadot. JS. There's the extension, there's the app. It probably means something completely different to developers. What, what, what is Polkadot.js and, and what role does it play in the ecosystem? Yeah, so Polkadot.js was, to the best of my knowledge, was the first library that was created um, to interact with Polkadot. But when they created the library, they were still figuring out um, uh, lots of things. So I guess the library author uh, I presume that created like, he created like poke out JS apps, which was like kind of a proof of concept of like the things that you can do with a library. So for some people, poke out JS is kind of like that developer console. Yeah, that yeah. is like it's a developer console that allows you to create trend, like raw transactions for power users. But it also has accounts. It also has staking. For lots of people, that is poke out JS. In reality, that's poke out JS apps. <laughs> And then eventually, uh, a while back, because Polkadot JS apps actually started as a wallet. I, I think that's 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 how it's kind of started. But mm. and then eventually, uh, the author of Polkadot JS created uh, an extension as a proof of concept that to this day has shaped all the extensions that we have in the ecosystem. Yeah, and that yeah. probably we should start like finding ways to 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 improve upon that basically. But yeah, like so Polkadot JS, it's a library above all or a set of libraries that were created at the point in time where things were quite a lot different. We didn't like all the functionality back then was like in the relay chain or almost all the functionality was there. And yeah, it's like it's a library, it's the apps and it's the extension. And just for a bit of context, uh, a a library is a library is uh, is a piece of software that is normally used for creating other pieces of software. It solves those um, common concerns that abstract away the so certain complexities so that you don't have to abstract them. It's like, it normally libraries have a public API, which is like a, a, a public interface that tries to hide certain um, complications so that you don't have to, right? So in this case, uh, a library, like Polkadot JS is, is mostly used for creating decentralized applications yeah, and yeah. stuff like so that. So instead of always having to write from scratch, you can just reference the library. Exactly. That, gotcha. is, that, is, that is library. And some libraries are lower level than others. Yeah. And some libraries built up on, there are libraries that built up on libraries. And gotcha, gotcha. It's like these Legos. That, uh, so why was there even a need to succeed or replace Polkadot JS? So Polkadot JS was created at the moment in time where Polkadot was not as mature as it is today. Yeah. At the same time, I think it was important to get something out yeah. more than creating something that was going to pass the test of time because it, it was very difficult to anticipate how to, how things were going to evolve, right? It was before Parachains even launched, I think, is when they was created, right? Yes. So since Polkadot JS was created, we didn't have something that we call the metadata. So like the, the runtimes that we have in, in Polkadot chains, um, they didn't have a way to express how their inner types are created and how to encode and decode the data. So uh, one thing to understand is that the way that the information is stored on chain is highly optimized for the performance of the network. It's sure. not so much optimized for data consumption, right? Mm. So you need to encode and decode all that data with something that is called scaling encoding. And back in the days, in order to interact with the networks, like um, the author had to create like a 
uh, a system of a type registry to define like custom definitions for everything. But obviously this doesn't scale, right? Like we are going to have many chains. We're going to have to talk with a lot of uh, different system chains and parallel chains. And also it's, it makes it very difficult to deal with random upgrades, which is one of our best value propositions. Yeah, yeah. So it was very difficult at the point in time where it was built to anticipate like all the great advances uh, advances that, that we what that we did yeah and uh, i'm of the opinion that it didn't age very well um also the tooling that was used for building it back then was not as mature as the tooling that we have today this is one part of the equation the other part of the equation is that when it was created we didn't have a light client yet or we didn't have a mature light client mm. um and we didn't have a clean interface to interact with clients, right? So now we have um, a standard JSON RPC spec, and this JSON RPC spec is uh, light client friendly. The yeah. other one wasn't. Mm. So it reached the point that we kind of realized there's too much technical depth inside Poco.js to do a big refactor and bring it home. It's going to it's going to be probably faster uh, and better to. To start, start new. from a from a so obviously we wouldn't be where we are today with Apocalypse.js, but at the same time it reached the point that some of us felt like a new library was needed. Gotcha. And the yeah. light client piece you put in there is important because you want apps that are built with Poppy to be able to query the chain or certain aspects of the chain without necessarily having to rely on big full nodes. That's right. Many of the so-called decentralized applications, they are not so decentralized as yes, we would like indeed. them to be. Yeah, yeah. Um, because they rely on centralized endpoints. Yeah. The nice thing about building applications with a light line, and this is something that, uh, to the best of my knowledge, we only have in Polkadot. It's like, it is possible to have a light node running in the background of your browser that is trustlessly verifying all the information that it's presenting to the user. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is beautiful. It's Some parts are even more performant than a normal RPC. Some parts are less performant, but we're about to make some changes in the in the protocol in concrete, like there is the RFC 9 that now uh, I think is going to be finally implemented. But long story short, in an ideal world, where we're, we are not in that world yet, but in an ideal world, it would be awesome if we could create decentralized applications that at least for the interactions with the chain, they do them in a trustless manner um, because that makes applications more resilient. But this is not the only reason. It, it's also important for, for development tools like uh, there is an important development tool that we have that is chopsticks that relies on on the light client yeah. to emulate a, a fork on, on a chain so that you can develop uh, on top of that quote unquote fork a chain for development purposes and it uses the light client behind the behind the scenes. So um, yeah, like having having a, a JSON RPC spec that is light client friendly has a lot of advantages. And sure, also, yeah. So and and it also allows us to build proper tooling on top of on top of it. So I mean, it's super important. I mean, you think about one of the biggest use cases for this, which is building like a wallet application, for instance. What would happen if MetaMask, the central points of MetaMask, suddenly decided to to turn off services or something like that? This is a massive risk. Yes, that the entire industry is exposed to right now. Yes, yeah. And there have been incidents already. Indeed. So one of the things that we will really be pushing moving forward is the collaboration with extensions, because I don't know if you have been using Talisman Subwallet, yeah. but once in a while, users are presented with a pop-up that says, um, oh, there's a new metadata version uh, upgrade. Uh, so the thing is that a user shouldn't know yeah, that totally. the metadata exists, right? Yeah, it's very confusing. Uh, it's extremely confusing. But like, you wonder what, if something's wrong. E exactly. But what is ironic about this is that we have the technology for the extension to obtain this metadata in a completely trustless manner. Yeah. So it's like we are probably one of the few key systems that can afford act having the, the extension getting this, and, and yet... We leak this into the like we leak this implementation data in, in front of the user, which is dangerous. It's not only that. It's like today we have uh, what it's called a sign extension. Um, that even if your extension has been compromised and has obtained a wrong version of the metadata, and therefore it has displayed wrong data to you, it puts a hash 
of the Merkleized version of this metadata. And then if that doesn't match with the metadata it's on chain, the transaction is invalid. Mm. So uh, long story short, um, we shouldn't be presenting this into users anymore. Like this is uh, part of this legacy that we still have from the past. So yeah, we, what we are trying to do from our team is to collaborate with all the right uh, teams and, and try to uh, push things forward so that we take advantage of the latest improvements that have been developed and that will make the user experience better. So yeah, like, and, and one area of improvement is, is this. Can you, in, in a very concise way, tell us how the approach of Poppy is different than JS? I mean, because most we've talked about how JS was just built very early and not really built for the times, but are there any other optimizations or optimal approaches that Poppy's taking? If we talk at the technical level, sure. the different boundaries of the different pieces of the library, they are not very well separated. They're very tightly coupled. So Polkadot API, we try to do a very good job at creating libraries that do one thing and one thing only, and they are composable. They, yeah. they can build upon. So for instance, if you want to use Polkadot JS just to do a scale encoding, which is like this, uh, you can't. Like, uh, it's tightly coupled to its type registry, it's tightly coupled, it cannot be properly decoupled, right? Or if you want to use Polkadot.js with some of the best um, cryptographic libraries that have been implemented in the last years, you can't because it's tightly coupled to uh, a WASM wrapper of, of a substrate library, etc., etc. So uh, one big difference is that we have created a library that it's a lot more, it's like Legos, right? Like we have created something that is more like little Legos okay, that you can put yeah, together. Gotcha. So the outside, we try to make it very useful. Another big difference is that Polkadot API is by default chain agnostic in the sense that you can create bindings for any chain, for your mm. custom chain, mm. for the system chain, mm. etc. And then on top of that, we're creating little SDKs for common functionalities like governance, um, ink, oh, yeah. um, cross-chain functionalities, et cetera, et cetera. Very so nice. What we think is going to allow us to keep improving the libraries as things keep improving, right? Like, at least this is the, the thesis and this is what we're trying to do. Uh, at Sub-Zero a few weeks ago, you introduced this, it was like a tool. Uh, what, what, what was that? So remember before we talk about Polkadot.js apps? Yeah, um, yeah. And the Polkadot.js apps inside, it has like uh, what I call like the developer console. Yeah. Which is a console that is very useful for, for developers. Um, it has a, a block explorer. It has uh, things for making storage queries, creating uh, transactions, etc. So we have created the equivalent uh, using Polkadot API being like the first. We're probably the team that used Polkadot JS apps the console the, the, most. the most, right? Like <laughs> yeah, yeah. by far. Like uh -huh. and maybe not the, the one that used the most, but definitely one of the top ones. Okay. And so you're just so, tired of using it. <laughs> so we were like, oh, we wish we had uh, the ability of like sorting, like sorting distance. We, we used, we could like having the ability to see the forks for some reasons. Like the, there were all these things like, oh, if, if I were to, uh, to make like a, a developer console, this is how I envision it, right? Mm. There were other teams trying to, to do it, but I think th they were all in the mindset of doing it kind of like uh, poke out chess. Like apps, a copy of it on pa for Bud or Bobby, yeah. Maybe not a copy, but that, that they, they could only think in that way. Mm -hmm. and, and we decided to do it in a, in a different way. Nice. And we have a lot of ideas to keep improving it in the future. And we are very excited to discuss these ideas with, with developers. Uh, but so far, the, the, the reception has been great. Um, the number of people using it grows every day. What's it um, called? Where, or where can we find it? We it's dev dot puppy how. Okay. So we oh, have, yeah, yeah. So we our dogs are under puppy dot how. Yeah. And then we ah. just put the dev on top of like before okay. dev dot puppy how. So yeah, not like fully released as a as a product yet, but it's it's, it's working. It's in beta. Yeah. But it's uh, fully functional. Um, we're going to add like multi-chain functionality very soon. Can I connect like my Talisman extension to it and work you, through there? It, and... You can it you can create extensions. You can you can sign them with Talisman. You can sign them with Soap Wallet. You can sign them directly with uh, with Wallet Connect. Uh, we integrate with Wallet Connect as well for some chains. So app developers out there who may be interested in in using Poppy or switching over to Poppy, first of all, they can find it at Poppy.how. These are the, where the docs are. What can they expect as far as advantages go 
uh, when they start using Pave instead? How is it going to make their lives easier? How is it going to make their apps better besides what we've already spoken about? I think that they will find the, the type inference, like our type system is, well, way, way better than Polkadot.js. The bundle sizes are incredibly small in comparison with Polkadot.js. The overall performance and uh, memory consumption is better than with Polkadot.js. And I think that once you get used to the mental models that we're proposing, because there's a little bit, like you have to kind of get used to the library a little bit, but the developer experience is a lot better. In my, yeah, like one thing that we have noticed though is that there's a big difference between uh, new developers that, that when new developers are presented with Poco.js and Poco.js API, they get Poco.js API much faster than they get Poco.js. I see. But, but if they're already poisoned with JS, then... It... In a way, it kind of feels like Poco.js has created like this kind of survival bias, right? Like, I mean, in a way, like yeah, it, yeah, I get it. they have, so it, it, for some developers, it takes them some time to do the, the, the... Hey, the, I mean, yeah. look, look, I love Polkadot.js, right? Like I built uh, the Kusmarian because it was complicated and we had to create like tutorials of how to use it, right? I still use it day to day. We have to appreciate what it's got us and how far it's brought us. I just want to say I'm incredibly happy to have the opportunity to work in this ecosystem with a with a team that of of super motivated people. Yeah, I just wanted to give a, a huge shout out to my team. That's awesome. Yeah. You know, just before uh, we got together today, I told somebody that I'm interviewing you about this. And they said, "Oh yeah, you know, there's only three people on that team. They're pumping out the code of ten. Yeah. So people are excited, man. Yeah. Um, thanks very much for coming on the show and uh, describing this to us and getting us up to speed with Poppy. Great name, great product, and uh, thanks for being here. Thank you so much for having me, Jay.